I'm always very excited when I get to do a video like this, where I get to review a very nice radio. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Anytone AT878UV. Look at that. <laughs> so first, I want to give a big thanks to Bridgecom Systems for sending me this Anytone 878. I have had a serious, a lot of fun doing this review and actually just getting to know this radio. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently than I normally do with these video reviews. I'm going to break this down into a little bit of segments. I think that's going to help me um, get my thoughts together a little bit better on this one. But let me just say right up front, this is a very nice radio and hopefully everything I can convey will um, will make that easy to understand because there's a lot to cover. So first impressions when I opened this radio was, wow, that screen has a really bright contrast. Okay, certainly I've tried it in the car using this, the, the speaker mic or the, the hands-free, but you don't need it because the, the it, it, it's so loud and clear. It's really easy to read, even outdoors when I was using this, I was taking this with me, this was my daily driver for a little while. Um, also, the controls on the screen are flush. There are two dials, one for volume and one for channel controls, which are always nice. A lot of radios only have one, con uh, one control on the top, and I like two. You have an extra button that you can program, and the buttons flush, but feel okay in the hand, pretty good. So, first impressions, pretty strong. Then I got to actually listening to the thing, and it has an amazingly loud speaker. Get ready to blow your doors off, baby. And 638. Handle is Ryan, Radio Yankee, Alpha and Andy. God, it makes it's my ears ring. From work. Uh, it's on the lowest Ray setting, and this is and, uh, just wonderful. CGI. Day before, uh, the 4th, I guess, uh, just enjoying a uh, cool 71 degree day. And uh, definitely going to be enjoying kicking off some shoes here in a little bit. Kick off those After, shoes, Ryan. Uh, you deserve it, buddy. This speaker goes well beyond louder than any of the other HTs I have or have used. It's quite simply amazing how loud this thing is. Lastly, this is something I figured out as I used it more. The battery life is forever on this radio. Um, I don't have another radio that lasts as long as this radio does. Now, I know it has a 3100 milliamp hour battery. That's how it's configured from Bridgecom. But wow, just a super, super impressive battery. Very long burn time. I let this thing run on all weekend, and I still barely cracked the top of the battery. That's how long this thing will run for. Amazing. So what's great on this radio is it has a very simple menu. You bring up the menu, click the menu button, and everything is laid out kind of like a Nokia phone back in the 90s. That was a 90s kid, young adult, and uh, I love the design of it because it's very simple. And all the controls are, are laid out the way you'd want, right? You've got talk group right at top, SMS, call log, zone, scan, roaming. Those are all the first settings that you get without having to click into it. Um, it has a really easy list button on the right-hand side, which you can program. Stock comes with the talk groups loaded, and that, frankly, is um, how I've been leaving it because it's just that good. So it deserves repeating again what is great. This speaker is great. As a radio goes, this speaker is top notch. It sounds amazing and is loud without getting distorted or too tinny or too distorted. I said distorted too many times. The speaker is that good though. I personally really liked the roaming capability of this radio. I know other DMR radios do roaming. Um, it's a fairly standard feature, but this radio felt like it was very quick, very fast for me to find a local repeater based on the zone that I was monitoring and just be able to use that one. So that was quite a nice feature. And, and that's my primary use case for it is uh, load up a code plug. Uh, if you can find one, I happen to live in Southern California where the PAPA system is, and there's code plugs that you know, are perfect for the 878, and I was off and running in, in no time after programming it. One thing that deserves its almost own section, possibly its own video coming soon, is the analog APRS capability in this radio. This radio is GPS enabled, and it does have APRS. 
not through DMR, which is a great feature. For those of you that didn't want to step up to an FT2DR or something like that, or a Kenwood uh, that still wanted APRS, this is one of the only handhelds on the market, other than those other two, that will do it that is currently being sold in retail stores or online. So another great thing about this radio is I found it really easy to set up my hotspot for use. All I did was create a contact. Again, contacts are at the top of the software system. So I just made a new contact, um, made it, you know, home hotspot, and I created a zone for home and added it to that zone. And then I just clicked on that and I had a bunch of other frequencies I wanted to add to home as well through my hotspot and talk groups and receives and all that. And it worked. It was very simple. Um, I've, again, I found it easier than most of the other software titles I've used for DMR radios. And of course, the last great thing is that battery life. That battery life is absolutely phenomenal, and it deserves credit just for that alone. Not enough radio companies are producing uh, feature-packed radios that have a great battery life. You'll get a lot of features, but you'll get a poor battery life, or you get a good battery um, with less great features, or you get all of it, but it's really expensive. This one is in a great little sweet spot. It's nicely priced, feature packed, and has an amazing battery. So I only have one thing that's not so great, and that's that it's still a DMR radio. And you might be thinking, ha, blasphemy, this guy's not a DMR guy. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is you still have to program it in the same way you would program other DMR radios. Yes, there are code plugs. Yes, you can modify the code plugs to suit your needs, and, and that's fine. However, I will give it points for the AnyTone programming software. And, and I'm actually not sure, and if BridgeCom makes this, I apologize. It could be the BridgeCom software. but. It's nicely laid out and it's intuitively laid out. Your channels are on the top and that's where you start and you work your way down. I find that more of a logical approach to programming DMR radios. Um, I've used the Redivis software. I was not a fan with that. And then I've had, uh, what's the other one? Anyway, I've tried other software before on the two other DMR radios. So I can't say that I'm the most prolific DMR guy, but I know what I like and I definitely like this software. So I saved it for almost the end of the video, but let's go through the specs because, um, man, I, I just needed to get all those really good things out right up front. The specs are this is a dual band radio, two meters and 70 centimeters. It is obviously DMR. It also supports analog. It has a front panel programmable uh, design, which you get the same controls basically you would when you're using the software, unlike many other DMR radios. This also as I mentioned, has GPS. It does APRS on analog and DMR, and it's Bluetooth, and I don't hate it. Uh, I've long been the, I don't wanna say curmudgeon, but the person who would tell people, don't hold yourself back from buying a radio because it lacks Bluetooth, because even when you get Bluetooth, you're not gonna really use it that much. This Bluetooth is pretty good. It's pretty easy to use, and it's pretty effective couple of DMR details, 4,000 memory channels, 10,000 talk groups, and 150 DMR ID contacts. Uh, that's pretty par for the course. It's on the higher end of that, uh, but this is still very good. On BridgeCom systems, it advertises a 6-watt output, which is a bit higher than standard HTs, and it has four power outputs, setting 6 being the highest and then 1 being the lowest, which if you watch my accessories video, part of the reason why I couldn't really bring that audio transmit down um, was because it's the lowest thing this goes to is 1 watt of output, which is not bad. It's fine considering the battery lasts for so long. It's not a big deal, uh, but that makes doing specific YouTube videos where you're, you know, the next room over and trying to do an audio test a little bit complicated so for you uh, burgeoning youtubers that want to do further videos on this just keep that in mind you, you may need to go down the block with one watt so the bridgecom uh, software load on here it you generally and, and this deserves a little bit of point here it generally locks it to two meters and 70 centimeters i had one problem with this radio when i was setting it up i was using the papa system code plug. And uh, when I tried to load it to the radio, the software complained that I had something that was out of the allocated bands. So I had to go in and track down what it was. Um, it actually wasn't that difficult to do. It was a talk group. I just deleted the talk group because I wasn't going to use that anyway. And I was able to load um, my 
my radio. So keep that in mind. We we live in a um, we live in a complicated world right now with Chinese embargoes and um, the realities of the FCC and the effect to the Chinese radios. So companies are trying to do the right thing as best they can to stay in the guidelines. Bridgecom being an example is kind of working in between these Chinese companies and trying to figure out a way to, to make this um, work with the FCC guidelines. You know, give them some latitude. It can't be the best thing all the time, particularly when you have stuff coming in from China, a country that we politically may have um, issues with at the, you know, at the government level, regardless of your feelings. I get comments all the time about, you know, we need more American made radios and um, don't look at the Chinese crap or, or the nature of their political system. I'm not going to get into all of that here. And if you, you have a problem with Chinese radios, I understand. I'm not against you. Um, I will tell you, though, that this is a standout example of quality, uh, much more than I expected uh, from a DMR radio or a Chinese radio. And I've reviewed a lot of them. So I understand you may not like a Chinese radio. I get that. But um, this is a a good example, a good showing of that. I will leave it with possibly the, the coolest um, spec. They advertise a 35 hour use time between charges on this radio. And I ran this thing for three days. Um, I did have to come back periodically and rekey into uh, TAC 310 and I was receiving TAC 310. No problems, ran through the whole thing. I don't know that I went below 50% battery. So some of that might be that the uh, talk group timed out depends on the repeater I was using and I did use both repeaters and hotspot. Um, fantastic. I received a couple of questions on this radio when I posted my accessories video. If you have not seen that, go check that out. The cards will be the link and then there's going to be a link in the description as well. One of the question was, would I pick this for a new technician, possibly a first radio? Normally, I would say no, I wouldn't recommend this for a new technician. Um, I don't think DMR is the place for a new, brand new radio technician, right? Or first radio. This is the fence rider. This is the radio that would be the fence rider for me. With the ability to program on the keypad, which this does have, and the ability for a less convoluted programming software solution, I find that this could be a first time radio. Now, of course, that individual should have a desire to get into DMR. So this would probably be more for the newer, newer technician, but he's still a techie kind of person. Um, but yeah, this is a fence rider. This is the first time I can say that I'm unsure on whether I would say, yes, new technician, go try this, which speaks volumes about this radio. I, you guys know I'm, I'm fairly hard on DMR, for its programming, not the radios necessarily, but the programming. Um, and when the features all come together and the software works out well, I, I don't have a problem supporting it. And, and this is an example of that confluence. Another question I got is, would I recommend this as a second radio, radio or possibly a first DMR radio? For that, I can emphatically say, yes, I would recommend this radio as a first time DMR radio. It is more expensive, but you can just shortcut your way through a lot of mental pain and anguish by going straight to something like this with the much better programming software and you will get all the fun out of radio and much less of the headaches. Now, let me be specific. I have no problem working on something that is convoluted um, just because it's complicated. That's fine, that's fun. I, I love that and I love people that are interested in that. I don't like, however, when things are needlessly complicated and painful because there could be a language barrier in the way the software is developed or because in the case of DMR, a lot of it was co-opted from the commercial environment, which makes sense for them, but doesn't necessarily make sense for us. Or there's just, you know, business realities like the way Motorola does stuff with their programming software. So I don't like things that are complicated for the sake of being complicated. I do appreciate things that are necessarily complicated due to the complex nature of the system. And I find that this radio and software, again, I'm gonna say it, does a really good job of marrying the two in a way that is not nearly as complicated as other DMR radios. So you probably can already guess, you know I like to wrap up my videos with a would I buy it rating. 
I would buy this at, um, I think it's $218.99 right now on the Bridgecom Systems website, but I would recommend this radio very wholeheartedly. The only people that I wouldn't recommend it for is extremely new hands that are not techies or really aren't ready to kind of put yourself in the mindset of programming DMR. And that's okay. You may get there in the future. If you're not, it's okay. Don't force yourself. There's plenty of other options, but um, that's it. If you have any interest in DMR, this is the benchmark right now as far as radios are concerned. I, I absolutely love this radio. I think that it is the, uh, it's a great marriage of what Japanese radios are doing functionality wise and what Chinese radios are doing and kind of getting them I'm not saying crossover. I don't think that's going to happen. But the fact that it does analog APRS is, is very, very good. And the software is much better than you can expect. And I don't just mean like I've been hammering on the desktop software for programming it. But I mean also the actual software on the radio. The menu systems are well-defined and easy to use. And I'm not surprised when I turn it on and I don't need a manual. It's just, oh, I just want to do that. Okay, I'm there. I'm using it. That is a, a thing I can't say for a lot of DMR radios. I'm often either um, grabbing a manual or poking around for what feels like more time than it's worth to figure out what I'm trying to do. Not the problem with this radio. So it's odd when I get a chance to really just enthusiastically gush over a radio. Um, Bridgecom did send me this. It is for me to keep or do with what I would like, but um, I still feel it is an amazing radio. I'm not paid for this review or anything like that. It is a very good radio. Um, and that's kind of how I'll leave it. Um, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. If you have not already, please subscribe. I stream at 7 p.m. every Friday. Somebody gave me a hard time about that. I, I don't know that I said say that wrong. But anyway, I, I'd love it if you checked out the Patreon. It helps support the channel. It's a dollar to get started, and that gets you access to our newsletter, which I put out once a month. Okay, guys, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I very much appreciated you checking out this video, and I'll talk to you later.